We're about to go on a tour of some of the most stunning structures on the face of the Earth. They'd be a delight for any sightseer, but these structures all have something in common. They were built using techniques that scientists and archaeologists can't explain, or for reasons they can only guess at. Is it possible that we've lost some of the building knowledge that our ancient ancestors took for granted? Watch this video and make up your own mind. There's nothing you'd necessarily call mysterious about the construction of the giant chimney on the island of Labuan, East Malaysia. It's 100 feet tall, and it's made of red bricks. There's a nice frieze at the top, and its square shape and double arched base are fairly conventional from an architectural point of view. The mystery is why it was ever built at all. That's why it's called Labuan's Mystery Chimney. Numerous theories have been put forward about why it's there, ranging from an unconventional lighthouse to a bell tower. But perhaps the most likely explanation lies with the island's failed coal mining industry. Labuan was once a British colony, and brickmaking was a common activity for prisoners on British colonies. Coal would have been needed to fuel the kiln of any brickmaking facility, but the coal mining industry collapsed here in 1911 due to a lack of profits and poor maintenance of buildings. All the brickworks were demolished, and the settlement at the island's coal point vanished. The chimney might be its final leftover relic, although it's a bit odd that nobody remembers its backstory 120 years later. You've never seen a theater quite like Teatro Andromeda in Santo Stefano, Chischigna, Italy. The gorgeous backdrop of the Italian mountains provides an atmosphere to this open-air venue that few other theaters can match. It's amazing to think that the whole site is the work of just one man, Lorenzo Reina, who built it by hand over a 30-year period. Lorenzo wasn't an architect, by the way. He was a farmer. Most of the year, the only visitors to the theater are the donkeys and sheep that live on Lorenzo's land but it opens up to the public for a few warm summer evening performances each year. What makes the site especially amazing is the fact that the 108 stone seats that made up the audience section correspond to the positions of the stars that make up the Andromeda constellation. If you were to take a picture from directly above the site, you'd see that each seat represents one corner of an eight-pointed star. Why did Lorenzo go to such lengths to make his theater reflect the sky? We have no idea. He never told anybody. Of all the places you might consider when you're trying to build the temple, the side of a sheer cliff probably wouldn't be close to the top of the list. That didn't deter the builders of the Hanging Temple of Hang Shan in Daetong, China, though. This would be a daunting construction project for anybody to attempt, so the fact that its creators pulled it off in the 5th century is nothing short of incredible. The structure clings to the side of Hengshan Mountain in a manner that appears to defy gravity itself. Although it looks humble from the outside, the temple consists of 40 different rooms connected by winding passageways that penetrate deep inside the rock. Nobody knows for sure who built the temple, but locals say it was the work of one monk named Liao Ran, working alone during the 5th century. Some restoration work was carried out at the turn of the 20th century, but it's mostly still the same structure that was carved into the rock all those years ago. Stranger still, it isn't dedicated to any one religion. You'll find Buddhist, Taoist, and Confucianist statues and carvings inside its rooms, with no one faith favored above another. The origins of Sarsky Kurgan in Kerch, Crimea are every bit as mysterious as the origins of the Chinese Hanging Temple we just looked at. Some people say that it was built 2400 years ago, although that seems impossible when you look at the smooth lines and the pristine state of the burial chamber deep inside its Greek-style archway. A kurgan is defined as a burial mound where a tomb is topped with dirt and stones, but the Sarsky kurgan is a far more ornate construction. It has a grand entrance hall fashioned out of limestone and taking the form of a long corridor, seeming to belong to a much more recent period of history. 
The ancient Greeks were known to have lived in this area 2,400 years ago, and so they were almost certainly responsible for its creation. Unfortunately, we don't know who it was built for. It had been looted by grave robbers long before archaeologists arrived to inspect the site, and the tomb's occupant was stolen, along with whatever treasures might have been interred with them. Early Christian graffiti is etched on some of the walls, suggesting that some of the faith's first followers used the Corgan as a secret meeting place. Hidden away in the foothills of the Alps, close to Pramarzo in Italy, is a network of temples, collectively known as the Temple of Damanhur. You'd have every right to assume that they were ancient if you saw them, but they were built over a period of 15 years from 1978 by a team of non-architects headed up by a 28-year-old insurance broker named Alberto Araudi. The entrance to the temples is hidden below a suburban house. The whole network was dug out of rock without any plans being drawn up, and the existence of the temples was kept secret until the work was finished. It ought to have been impossible, and yet here these beautiful psychedelic temples are. Even now, the network is considered to be unfinished. New passageways and rooms are being added to the complex every year. Even though it's called a temple, this isn't a religious site. Alberto Ariaudi and his followers consider it to be a temple to humankind, rather than a temple to the gods. Although some people consider the group responsible for Damanhur to be a cult, Alberto insists that he and his friends are harmless, and they simply enjoy creating great works of art and architecture. There are many fairy tales and legends in Azerbaijan about the true origin and nature of the Maiden Tower in Baku. It's a shame that none of them seem to get us close to the truth behind the building's existence. Baku is an old walled city, and the Maiden Tower is the oldest structure in it. It's so old that nobody can say for sure when it was built, or what it was called by the people who built it. Most educated guesses say that it's a 12th century construction, but there's a significant difference between the stones that make up the first three stories of the building and those that make up the rest. Those lower three layers are more likely to be 2,500 years old, and possibly even more than that. That would make the tower older than Islam, meaning that if it was a religious building, it's more likely to have been put together by Zoroastrians. Alternatively, it could be an observatory. The stone protrusions that jut out from the tower correlate to the upper and lower levels of the lunar cycle. The name Maiden's Tower comes from a legend about a king's daughter leaping to her death from the top of the tower to avoid an arranged marriage, but there's no historical evidence to support this. Most of the people who see the Miners in A Coruna, Spain, without knowing about their backstory, assume they're ancient megaliths. In fact, they're far more recent works of art. They were created by Manolo Paz, and he's still alive today. There are two alternative names for the sculptures. They're commonly called either the Family of Meniers or Meniers for Peace. In Paz's own words, the sculptures stand and look out over Spain's northern coast into the Atlantic Ocean to provide a sense of meditative hope to anyone who sees them. The holes in the granite blocks are there for visitors to peer through and offer them a different perspective on the view. You'll find them arranged in pairings of tall rocks and small rocks, a technique Paz uses to represent parents standing and looking out to sea next to their children. A few of the stones have been arranged to provide a view of the Tower of Hercules through their peepholes, but the majority of them look straight out to sea. While the Meniers for Peace are modern structures that look like older ones, the obelisk of Odzun in Armenia is every bit as ancient as it looks. This is a most unusual obelisk, and that's not just because of its unique double stele arrangement. You'll find it on the grounds of the Basilica in Odzun, but the obelisk is thought to predate the Basilica by several centuries. One side of the structure is covered in carvings from both the Old and New Testament, perhaps commemorating Armenia's transition to accepting Christianity. The other is decorated with floral patterns. Ideas about when it was built vary, 
but the most popular theory is that it was built as a statement of defiance by the Christian side of a conflict with Hindus that briefly escalated into war here during the 4th century. Another theory, based on the presence of the floral patterns, is that this is a monument intended to represent the losses suffered by both sides in that war. The basilica was presumably added at a later date when Christianity was accepted in the country more easily. It doesn't take a genius to work out how the Mojave megaphone got its name. It's in the middle of the Mojave Desert, and it looks exactly like a megaphone. It might, however, take a genius to work out what this strange monument is doing there. The metal sculpture is firmly bolted to a pair of rocks at the top of a hill close to Baker, California, and is made from thick strips of welded iron. Nobody knows where it came from or what it represents. It's been said to resemble an antenna or a drum, and it's even been accused of being a top-secret weapon of some kind. That might not be far from the truth. A few military experts who've examined the Mojave megaphone say that it's not a weapon per se, but might have been an amplifier for a siren that was used to alert locals when the U.S. military performed weapon tests in the desert. If there is a military history or a military purpose behind this old installation, the military has never owned up to it. We can't even say for sure how long it's been there. There are some California natives who swear it's been in situ for a century or more. Almost every region of every country in the world has local legends about lost gold or treasure buried deep below the ground somewhere in the area. If you live close to Baguio in the Philippines, that treasure is the lost gold of General Yamashita, and the most likely place for it to be hiding is somewhere within the city's Japanese tunnels. Most of these tunnels, built by invading Japanese forces during the Second World War, have been thoroughly explored and mapped out. But there are still gaps in the maps, and places nobody's been able to reach. That keeps alive the possibility that the looted gold procured by those forces under the command of General Yamashita Tomoyuki is still down there in the dark, waiting to be found. The entrance to the tunnels is in the Baguio Botanical Garden, but visitors should beware. The tunnels are pitch black and incredibly humid and can be dangerous to visit without a guide. The official reason for the construction of the tunnel network was to store military supplies, so you might not find anything other than a few old bullet casings and discarded helmets. Still, you never know. We're not sure how we'd feel about venturing deep into the woods to find a place called Devil's Hole Creek. But if you're not frightened by the name, that's where you'll find the Devil's Hole Ruins in Cresco, Pennsylvania, USA. The ruins probably don't deserve to have such a foreboding name. They're actually quite beautiful to look at, and they're more likely to be the remains of a speakeasy or a ski lodge than anything to do with satanic practices. This might have been quite a grand dwelling before it fell to pieces. There are large double fireplaces still visible among the ruins, along with a water boiler and a coal furnace. Add that to the fact that the construction methods of the walls is consistent with the 1920s and 1930s, and the chances that this was an illegal speakeasy increase. That idea would also explain why the property was hidden away deep in the woods, and why it became abandoned. When alcohol was legalized in 1933, there would have been no reason for the speakeasy to stay open. Turkey has more underground cities than most of the world's countries, and it has one in particular that puts almost all the rest to shame. That's Kaymakli Underground City in Kaymakli Belediyesi. This cavernous space first opened 4,000 years ago and has seen millions of people come and go from within its walls during those years. Consisting of a series of large chambers, Kaymakli contains living quarters, wine-making facilities, and even stables for horses. The storage spaces are so well suited to their purpose that people are still using them today. We can only guess why the city was built to begin with, but it's known that members of many religions have come and spent time here over the passing of the centuries as they fled persecution from elsewhere. In the here and now, there's an enormous curiosity among the Turkish public about what might be hiding in the city's lower levels. 
it's known that Kemakli has eight floors, burrowing deeper and deeper below the ground, but only the upper four floors are open to the public. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.